Hello everybody else, uh, welcome back. Kind of this is inside pitch, but it's more of how I set up my replays. I've been asked several times by some of the aids that I use on um, inside pitch and various other games. So um, when I set up a replay, I always like to make up a pitching status sheet. And in this picture status sheet, and I've got macros set up to do a lot of this shit for me, but I um, put the days of the season up top here, pitchers and then batters, and I go through and find out with a transaction, um, a UF, uh, or transactions if I can find them. Um, the um losing my mind here because i should only be doing one thing at a time i use the transactions for the season most of the time we use atg and uh, oh, oh, i forget what the name is um oh let me see if i can find it real quick get my get my shit together here under baseball I think they changed it used to be raw Yahoo groups and now it's not now I gotta remember where the hell I put the link okay there we go um, I go to the ATM which is basically automatic transaction transaction manager for baseball for Windows and I download the transactions and the um lineup cell uf for the season that i'm going to be playing and then i put all that into excel and using those two and sometimes it takes fixing the macro up and fixing dates up and stuff like that i'll run it through this program to assign every start for a pitcher every start for an infielder and when they were available or not available which will give me roster changes without having to get too detailed. And then I go to Retro Sheet and I download and I run the be even and all that. And I get all the information from Retro Sheet. As you see, and a lot of stuff here. And I run it through for the pitchers and batters with the rosters put in here. And that'll give me for batting. It'll give me the pinch hitters appearances for each player versus right and left. So according to the macros I have set up. And again, they may not be perfect. I may have made errors in there, but I pretty well double checked them all and they come out accurate. Something here may, there may not go through right. But um, for this case, it was the, I think it's the Braves, but I can't remember the season, 79 perhaps. And then I also run the whole damn thing for the pitchers, which gives me the splits right here. Obviously, it hasn't been run or I cleared the page. Uh, the splits right here for um, their appearances per innings, less than five innings, five to six, seventh, eighth, ninth, and then 10 plus innings. And I have that all set up in um, in the macro, and it takes a while to run the macro, so I'm not going to do that on uh on the uh, while I'm recording, um, I tell you, I think I got another retro sheet that I can open up and show you that my 1980 retro. That'll take a while to load up too. So between all that, um, it's almost there. It gives me a pretty accurate idea of how many days they're available. For the pitchers, as you see here, they're pretty well broken down. Game start and less than five innings, this is the appearances they had. Five to six innings, the appearances they had. Seventh, eighth, and then ninth. So it kind of nails your closure in pretty good for the end of the game and uh, your middle relievers and stuff. And it kind of helps you choose the pitchers without actually showing any favoritism which i think is important 
um, because uh, you'll tend to not use the good guys, I mean the bad guys, and you'll tend to use the, overuse the good guys, and um, uh, we should do that. Uh, I'm going to pause this real quick. I forgot to take my meds. All kinds of meds i got to take right now. All right, so um, as you can see, for the for Atlanta for 1980, um, they were playing right now. We're actually playing on the 29th, um, actually 29th of June. As I play, and I got away from it for a while and lost some of it, so it's not going to be as accurate as I'd like. I'd put their appearances down in here. Anybody that pitches more than one point innings, I'm try. I try to make rest the next day. You don't always get that opportunity, but then if they pitch three days in a row, I try to make them rest. Starters get the rest the day before a start and two days after a start. And um, and of course, an M or an I or a T or something to show up when they're not available in the roster, and that gives me then. This number over here, which tells me how many blank spaces they have, and I can kind of come up with a range over here for um, the percentage that they will play based on their availability of, for that game. Same with the pinch hitters down here. Um, and I've got this has gotten a little more fine tuned as I go along. 80 is one of my older ones. So uh, when I go to relief pitch, I can. Go ahead and type in a, uh, I mean, put in a uh, inning, say the eighth inning. I want to bring in a pinch hitter for St. Louis. I just hit it. And, of course, it sells slower now, but that would be Kim Seaman in the eighth inning. And you see over here, Seaman's available 13 uh, I'm not aware if it's a percent or not. Weighted 13 out of 34. Um, I, I total, that's what I do. I total up the total amount of appearances they have for that and they get a percentage off of that and then we go up um, roll a d100 come right on down here and pick it um so it is what it is um and that kind of helps me utilize pitchers better pinch hitters same thing versus rights versus lefts um i just hit that say we're going to pinch hit for a lefty versus um of course, at St. Louis, we're going to have Keith Smith come in. This way, you're more apt to use all the available players and not just the ones you want to use, because otherwise you'd never use a .000 pinch hitter. Um, the same reason as I use a strategy role for uh, IP is because you would tend to not run the guys that suck running, and you would overrun the guys that run well, and it just skews stats up. And to keep things real, I don't do that now. That's my my uh, big, big thing. Transactions, I also keep them for playing with cards. Right now, with this, I don't have to. This I made up um, based on my old dice roller. Um, you've probably seen videos for that out there somewhere. Maybe I haven't did that. That was clunky. But I had all the bells and whistles in it. But I go in and I put all the information in. And usually this is by hand, but a lot of this I can get a um, PDF to Excel um, converter and run it through and be able to get this. But you got to watch it, especially with the pictures. A lot of times the spaces don't come out right and everything. And I know it doesn't really matter an inside pitch, but I like to be anal about that. So I do that for each team. Then I have my schedule right here based on the schedule that I get. And I also get that from the uh, AT manager for baseball for Windows um, as played schedules. Um, and I can just click here for the next game. Click here to load the visitors. Click here to load the home team. Uh, some of these numbers help determine um, the availability. As you see, I link all this to my... Um, that later I'll, i link all this to my um, pitching status so i know who's available for the game and that brings me to this over here they'll show up red when they're not available either they're starting or they are um, unavailable due to being in the minors or something same thing for the pitchers down here 
Then I just put the position they're playing in a batting position here. Go to the visitors, hit my new game. Colors, colors, you assign colors to each team base. I take them right off the card. Use Paint Shop Pro or Paint to get down the uh, color breakdown for each thing and stick it up here. Text 1, text 2 would be the top of the card. And uh, back down, I mean, not, not text, but background 2 and text 2 would be the third, or I mean, second, next line down. And of course, the third line for uh, Montreal and uh, Houston one season. And I do not have uh, the patience to work out all the if ends that are necessary to get the fourth color in there for Houston in 80. So Houston's just going to have three colors. Um, that, loads, that all loads in. Then you just use little macros to click on the batter change. Uh, batter thing will roll the dice for the batter. It's not really, it is necessary if I have some flags in there. Um, little little things. All this is picked up by separating out the uh, the fielding up here. As you see, it's all NA right now because I don't have anybody slated to play. Um, so that's basically it. Um, a lot of this stuff I cannot share because you wouldn't have to buy the game. Um, this one's not so much because I don't have the bells and whistles in there, but I still wouldn't send it out with rosters and stuff. Um, a lot of work, but if you're playing a whole season, it makes things so easy. All right, now I can whip a game out in an hour. I'm still playing with my charts and dice because I don't have all these buttons working. So uh, I do use Excel to roll the dice, but I have found that it doesn't do anything differently. And I can play with the dice on my tabletop, too. It just makes it so I can record it better. Oh, so basically, that's it. Um, you know, I can always send out a shell of this to somebody if they need it, but uh, there's an awful lot that goes into it. You'll probably get lost, and I'm not very good about answering questions online. I've got my health problems, then I got work, I got my wife's health problems. Um, at least the last thing on my mind is, is um, picking up and answering questions. I'll get them when I get them, but I can't guarantee anything. So most of the time, you just be lost with this. Uh, but there it is. That's how I run the season replay. Currently, I have 2008 gone and 1980 gone from way back when AP first started up. And I have uh, 1969 gone also. And yes, I have made um, I have made games. Wow. Uh, I, uh, IP games for all these. I have, uh, uh, let's see, uh, there's my 1979 game, which I'm still working on. That one needs a lot of help. I got to get that one, got to get that one. Actually, I'm going to redo that one to make it more modern. This is what I did. That one I'm still converting over from 80 because I'm playing strictly cards in this. I had a lot of time in my hands in the hospital and rehab, rehab so I worked on this while I had the time. Put the, the laptop up on my legs and while I'm laying on my back doing nothing, make the best of it. Um, let's see. 79, I have 69 right there. 69's uh, um, a, a playable. I've been playing that one a lot. Boston and Baltimore are my next up. I just got done with Cardinals and the uh, Cubs. That one I don't post on. I just play that here and there. Give myself a break from AD in 2008. But uh, these are the things I do to, to structure down. And, um, ah, didn't want to knock out 80. Um, that's how I set up a replay. A lot of guys were asking me what I did and how I did it. Uh, a lot of macros. I guess I should, could have showed macros too. Um, macros, there's a ton of them. And um, I'm not the greatest programmer. I'm a machine mechanic by trade. So I am definitely not a programmer by any means. Developer, macros, as you see, there's quite a few of my use.
some of them are off my older games. Um, I'd have to look and see. I think some of these are like, uh, they're off my old dice roller for, for um, uh, putting in um, innings, changing the innings and stuff. This in here, I just went with two different tabs. I keep track of the pitcher's tire up here. The, the tire rate always shows, so I get reminded if they go out. I've got to put in a reminder, a highlight for these um, um, uh, special Ks. I do tend to forget them. If I hit the batter's die and that's available, I want them to light up reds if this is less than their number or equal to it so I can I can remember that uh, i got to check. they got to do a strikeout if it's an L. Anyway, that's it. Kind of a fumbly video, not my not my best, but gives you an idea of what I do for setting up seasons. So you have an idea what's behind the Excel sheets. You see, uh, a lot goes into it, and uh, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining in.